What's up, Survivors? My name is Sunny, and well, if you've been grinding out State of Decay 2 these days, you've probably come to realize, man, this game has gotten a lot harder. The introduction to the Plague Territories and all the new mechanical changes have really changed the dynamics of the difficulty regardless of where you play at. Standard, lethal, it doesn't matter. So my goal in this video is to give you my most 10 critical tips to survive that you need to know. If you're new to the channel, subscribe as I cover State of Decay 2 and 3 news, as well as guides and live streams, especially since 90% of you watching still haven't joined a new and fast growing community. So my first and easily one of my most important tips has to be carry at least one blood plague cure with you at all times. Now I've had to learn this the hard way when I first started playing again not long ago and losing a few of my community members reminded me the hard way that blood plague cures will save lives. Make sure you farm up plague samples and have one available either carrying in your inventory or in your vehicle at the very minimum when you're out scavenging. Bonus extra tip on top of this, carrying scent block can also save your life, but this one is admittedly harder to get. Second tip falls right in line with the first, and that is do not panic if you get the blood plague. If you have the opportunity to get back to your base, you can park someone who has the plague in the infirmary, and it will prolong their life until you find a cure. Pro tip here as well, you can even cheat this a little by going to one of your outposts and switching characters, then parking your character with the plague through the community menu. Watch out for this one as this can save your life as well. All right, so this one might be one of the most obvious tips for State of Decay veterans, but if you're new to the game or even if you have a lot of experience, this is one that a lot of people forget and it gets them killed and it's simply always carry health and stamina items when you go out on a run, while the new blood plague mechanics, especially in lethal, might be more dangerous than losing your health these days. It can still happen from time to time, and having painkillers with you at all times should be mandatory. If you're at the start of the game though, even bandages are better than nothing. You want to make sure you keep your health up, pop them when needed, but I'd argue the thing that will get you killed the most is a lack of stamina and this will lead to your health dropping or getting the blood plague. I can't tell you how many times I've survived simply by just running away and when you have a backpack full of items, your stamina is going to deplete much more quickly. So one of the most important things you can do is carry snacks, energy drinks, or stimulants to keep your stamina up. This is arguably more important than anything else because even if you keep your health up and blood plague is off of you, you can still get overwhelmed and the best way to survive is to fight off as much as you can which you need your full stamina or to be able to escape your life. So what I always do is at least keep a stack of pills and one stack of minimum of snacks in my inventory but if you have an abundance of energy drinks or stimulants or you can craft them go with those instead. Pop these things freely do not be stingy as it can definitely save your character's life. So the past tips that I just gave you are what you do in dire or dangerous situations, but this tip here is to help completely avoid those as much as you can, and that brings me to my fourth tip, stealth. This is massive and the best way to avoid these extremely threatening situations. Being crouched down and moving via stealth, walking are all key to not making any noise and attracting a lot of zeds. Keep in mind the regular zeds will scream out and draw more of them to you, which then further then will draw out freaks as well like ferals. When you're being quiet and killing Zeds quietly, you can survive much easier. This includes looting and taking the slow route instead of speeding up and making noise if you get a fail check. This can be time consuming playing this way, but really it's mandatory in my opinion if you aren't well equipped, especially in the higher difficulties. If you have a gun and hundreds of bullets and you go in Rambo, then you're good to go, but playing in lethal, I find myself constantly being stealthy, not because I'm scared of Zeds, but because I'm scared of those tricks triple feral pack so being stealthy in this game will absolutely save your community's lives. With stealth being the theme here, my next tip is arrows over bullets, or at least use silencers at all times. This one I admit I've had to learn the hard way many, many times. Lately with the difficulty changes, stealth is my priority, and in my mind, having a gun as a backup if I'm in trouble to use has always made sense. The problem is, many times I felt threatening situations, and I drew my gun and I started blasting away, thinking I would be safe, and I was safe for a few seconds, only to realize now 50 these Zeds are now converging upon me, now instead using crossbows because they are one silent, two the weapon doesn't break, and three the ammo is cheap, 
makes it my preferred weapon of choice, only mostly early on in a new community. As you start to gather more resources, I prefer to start using guns with a silencer at all times, preferably a handgun so the weight is a little bit less. This includes me going after enemy enclaves if you're fighting humans with a loud gun. You're going to find yourself quickly fighting off both the Zeds and humans alike, which will absolutely lead to your death. So my tip here is silence range weapons as much as you can to survive. All right, so my next tip is one that I've talked about many times, and that is stacking infection resistance. This makes a huge difference. If you see in this footage the difference between a zero infection resistance to around 200, you can tell this can be a lifesaver. Now, some of the way that you can easily stack infection resistance without random luck, level someone in medicine, then go pathology and go the full route. This will give you the community-wide resistance. Even 50 versus zero will make a big difference. You can also find someone with the hygiene trait or go ahead and grab Sasser Regional Hospital in Drucker County. Find ways to stack this if you can because it can make all the difference between life and death. So this tip might be a little bit harder to accomplish, but certainly doable in a number of ways. This is absolutely a lifesaver, even in the biggest situations like a triple feral attack. Building a sniper tower if you have the builder hero specialization, calling this when in trouble is huge. Other ways are from enclaves who can provide radial support if you're allied. Cleo also, if you have the points from Daybreak, also unlocks this feature and you can just stick it in one of your buildings. It's what I personally use. And last but not least, at least Providence Ridge and New Hope Church. If you acquire this outpost, you have the option to go ahead and get sniper support. So if you're ever in trouble, find high ground or find a safe spot and call on this to save your life. It will make a difference. It has saved me quite a few times. And this one might be the most obvious, but just in case it's not, use your vehicle. Now this gets trickier at higher difficulties as the vehicles can't take a lot of hits in lethal before it explodes. But even if it does explode, sometimes Sometimes you can get enough traction to get away. Hop in your car and run away in bad situations. Run over Zeds if you need to. Another slight tip, use the back of your car so it receives little to no damage. If you hit with the front of your car and where the engine is, the car is going to break much faster. So when all else fails, use your vehicle. And you can also use specialized vehicles that can save your life like here in this footage. Check out the Zed Buster and the Impaler as both of these will kill Zeds upon impact on the front of the car and this will definitely work really well. Now this tip is crucial to the pacing of your game and it makes the difference between a community ready to fight versus an under equipped one and that is don't do too much too soon. When you start a new community and you start building up characters with influence through missions then they start to become citizens then become heroes and that in itself increases the game's difficulty. It's why you don't see triple feral packs at the start of a new game but why after a long playthrough you start to see huge packs of dangerous scenarios. So hold off on doing missions until you start collecting a decent enough set of items in your base and you're fully equipped and you just feel comfortable taking on those more threatening situations. Now this is one that I didn't know until this year and this is huge, it's combat related with grab and shove. This is something you want to do with huge packs you're trying to fight off. You simply dodge, you grab them and you push them into the group and now you have full on crowd control. This will keep damage off of you and make it even easier to fight larger packs. So learn this combo and utilize it to its fullest. Now that is my top 10 tips to survive that you need to know. Write below in the comments guys your tips to help your fellow survivors live and subscribe and join a very fast growing community and join my State of Decay 2 Discord to team up with your fellow survivors and talk anything State of Decay and other survival horror games. I'm Sunny. As always, stay safe, survivors.